pathetic. So today we're going to take a deep dive into Chantal's interpersonal relationships through this whole Ala Sala arc and really for the entirety of her channel, Chantal never takes accountability for her role in conflict. According to her, everyone else is the problem. So we're going to take it back, way back to as early as 2017 when Chantal admitted to shagging her friend's boyfriend on the couch while her friend slept in the same room. We'll take a look at what she herself has brought to YouTube over the years, and I have a feeling we're going to find a common denominator in the end. Let's get into it. Maybe I thought I, thought I would tell you about my Scottish lover. This was one of the best sexual encounters I've ever had. Excuse me. It was one night only. It was literally probably one minute long and and it was the best like one of the best it was one of those like passionate quickies so when I worked at the call center back in 2005 I was living with my ex but we weren't dating yet um, we were just roommates And um, I met this girl, Lucy, very timid, very shy, um, kind of punk goth looking, very shy, you know, very meek, mousy, very plain Jane, um, dressed, I like the way she dressed and I thought, you know, People who are quiet and mysterious intrigue me, so we ended up talking and becoming kind of friends. Not really friends, but like, you know, just started talking at work. And what I'm about to tell you what I did is very shitty. You know, I feel bad, I do. But it happened. <laughs> do I regret it? Do I regret it? I'm not one to cry over spilled milk, you know. So, one day she rents me over at a party and we were going to go out. I get to her apartment, um, she's at the top floor and it's a really old, old building. Like I think they tore it down, it was so old. And she lived on the top floor. And at the time I was, I was probably like, close to 200 pounds lighter. I wasn't very, very heavy at all. Um, I was wearing these big golf boots. They were nice. Um, cause I dressed like that back then. I had a lip piercing. I had piercings all up my ear and I had recently gotten this tattoo. <laughs> I get there. I didn't even know she had a boyfriend. I knock on the door, she opens it. Out from the living room when I come in comes this tall, like six foot four, fucking hot, like super hot. Oh man, Scottish guy. I found out he was Scottish later. He had, you know, he had like a bit of an accent. And I don't even know his name. I don't remember. So, oh. the minute he, our eyes lock, his face just got like, my god, you are one of the most beautiful people I've ever seen. I don't know if it's just being nice, you know what I mean? <clears throat> I know it bugs all of you, I know it bugs a lot of you too that somebody finds a fat person beautiful. Aww. Go cry in the corner. So anyway, I was like, I love attention. I love attention, especially for men, okay? So I was like, damn, you know?
we had a good time. I could tell he really, really loved her, Lucy. I could tell they were really in love. But then they cracked, then they brought out some cocaine. I could tell they were really addicted to it. Um, we're arguing, so I knew they had a tumultuous relationship. And I found out, more pizza? Both were, especially Lucy. I think she was schizophrenic. She was extremely unwell, extremely unwell and she would get I could tell why she kept to herself she was very mentally sick I feel bad um, and we, she was bisexual too so the plan was for her and I to hook up but we laid in bed together um, rubbed each other's back but she got really drunk and high and I think she got really depressed um, which when you're, when you're depressed, drinking is not the best thing. It's a depressant. So, ended up being that she fell asleep. I remember her telling me that her and her boyfriend didn't sleep together much anymore. She was, she, she just wasn't into sex. And she did kind of hint that she would let him have a sexual partner if he really wanted. So anyways, I wasn't expecting this. Um, she fell asleep and the way their apartment was it was a bachelor so there wasn't really a set sectioned off bedroom they just had a mattress off of the kitchen <clears throat> like in the kitchen area and he was on the couch in the living room and I just went and sat there and I'm like you know I didn't know what to do so I don't remember what we talked about it wasn't long and he just grabbed me and like Whatever sexual frustration this man had, and he, oh, he had big hands, he was so tall and well built, very sexy kisser, just started kissing me. And I was like, wow, you know? Whatever sexual tension he had built up, he took it out on me. So it was like, I had a skirt on, and he laid me on the couch, like threw me laying down on the couch. This is TMI, okay? I remember I had like pink underwear on and he just pushed them, like didn't even take them off, just ripped them aside. Yeah, sexy, huh? And oh, yeah, the best, like, you know, it would maybe it was like a minute, like in out, in out, done. Like, but it was so good. Like, I can't explain it. I don't know if you guys know what I mean. And then after, I was like, you're not going to tell her, are you? He's like, yeah, I'm going to tell her. We tell each other everything. Like, brownie points for him, but... I was like, well, there goes our friendship. I was really worried. But, um... Anyway, he was like... When I went to leave, he's like, I have something for you. And I was like, okay. And it was like a mixtape. It was like a cassette tape. And on the back, it had like his phone number on it. I was like, who listens to tapes? I don't even have a tape player. And I, the one song I remember being on there is um, the song by the Pixies, La La Love You. Um, All I'm saying, pretty baby, la la. You should listen to it, it's cute. It was a really weird situation. I don't expect everyone to understand. <laughs> At work, she seemed kind of distant. Um, but we did end up hanging out again. We did shrooms together. Bad idea. Oh my god. Back then, I didn't really understand mental illness. You know, like... She's an adult. That's not my fault. She can choose to do things or not, you know? <clears throat> bad idea. I remember her like looking at, we were in the park and she was looking at the trees and she's like, I just want my boyfriend. So I, I walked her home 
went in, sat down for a bit, and part of me was secretly hoping that, you know, that night would repeat itself. Because I kind of, I kind of, I started to kind of like it a little bit, you know, like when the D's that good. Um, but he was distant. He was kind of like, you know, not, I, I didn't get the vibes from him. So she must have, uh, they must have had an argument because I remember sitting there and uh, they were, started arguing about something. And uh, she yelled out like, why don't you go jerk off then? You're always horny. Or something like that. I don't know. So I think she knew, she knew you know. I mean, he totally used me and I don't care. I knew he didn't want a relationship with me, like, you know? Um, and then I felt a little bad. Um, I felt, you know, uh, kind of shitty and low. You know, like, why am I doing this? You know, her mood was bringing me down. So I got up to leave, and this is the other people where I told you, remember, it's happened before where pets were having sex under my skirt her two cats were doing it under my, under my skirt it was a long black skirt I didn't even <laughs> and I, I never called him I never saw them again I really hope she's okay um, yeah so I don't know what became of them but I'll never forget that that was, that was scandalous, and it was good. <laughs> In January of 2018, someone by the name of Hello Cat commented on a video talking about Chantal using ableist slurs. On January 9th, 2018, Chantal released a video. This was a mystery mukbang Monday that Chantal used to do on her channel, where she complained about a friend being upset with her for most of the video. This was in response to the comments left by Hello Cat. Unfortunately, I can't get any clips of this video. This was before everything was archived so well. Uh, she had actually deleted it within 24 hours, removed everything about the friend, and re-uploaded it the next day. This will tie into the next segment. Remember, this is still in the very early years of her channel. On March 31st, 2018, someone with the username Nacreous Moon, who turns out to be Halo Cat, left a comment on Chantal's video that said, the only time you lost weight was catnivic or whatever. And that was only through strict vegan diet and exercise and being away from your enablers, AKA family. You had a waste back then, but then you decided you didn't want to work for it anymore. I starved myself to avoid looking like you and Steph 20 years later. And thank goodness I still have my body. It's hard work, but whatever. According to you, I'm a dumbass who asked to get by dressing in skirts in high school, remember? So enjoy your karma, Chantal Soro. You've earned it fair and square. You may think you're smart, but the rest of us see a fool who's never going to grasp common sense. Chantal actually responded to this comment, and in pure Chantal fashion, she went straight for the kids. LOL, you have always been a psycho. I don't think you want to go there with exposing because your past is not so clean, my friend. Get offline and take care of your kids. You had no reason to flip out on me, but you always do that. And that's why you have no one in your life, not even your family. Don't take your psychotic issues out on me. You need a hobby or something. When did I ever say you deserve to get, you are effing crazy, LOL, wow. Worry about your issues. And like I said, stop starting drama and take care of your kids. Now, this led to this real-life friend making a Kiwi Farms account. Uh, it's still there. You can still see it. She went under the name Manic Hunt, and this is what she had to say. She can't blackmail me, but she can get her channel shut down for slander if she brings up my kids again. 
I think. I don't know. But yes, I've known this girl 20 years and no, she has never taken her health seriously. Don't assume she struggled because she's overweight. Chantal was part of the mean girl clique in high school. She was never bullied, but she did sleep with almost every boyfriend her friends had. Her mother, Kim, worked for Red Cross with the disabled, and Chantal would mock them and make fun of them. She calls other big girls fat and obese when upset. She puts her mother through hell. The woman who worked full-time raising a spoiled overeater and a disabled young girl who never even had the last piece of any dessert. I ate over there a lot because Chantal always had to have it or she would throw a tantrum. Oh, and the way Chantal picked on her sister always told her she was ugly and stupid. I always felt it was because her sister's dad married Kim while Chantal's dad ran when she was two. She had a thing for hanging out with the elderly or disabled. There was a home next door to our friend's. And she would flirt, expose herself, and use them for money and drugs. And that's the very tip of the iceberg. You don't want to know her obsession with 9-11 victims falling to their deaths. There was a lot of back and forth for the next few days between Chantal and Manic Hunt, a.k.a. Kathy. Manic Hunt would post some revealing information about Chantal on Kiwi Farms. Chantal did address the situation in a live stream on April 1st, 2018, but it was not archived. Essentially, she said she would not be blackmailing Manic Hunt because she had integrity and she would be taking the high road. On April 3rd, 2018, Chantal released this apology video. Hey guys, so before I... Um, end the video. I'll show you what I got. I'm going to clean up my fridge, everything when I get home. So tomorrow's video, I'll show you my kitchen and my fridge and what's in my fridge and stuff. But I don't want part of me getting better is also mentally getting better. And I can't do that when I'm always on edge, involved in drama. And so I want to um, do a formal apology. I'm doing this. I'm going to put this clip at the beginning of the video in case people don't watch it. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, so just keep watching the whole video. This is at the end of the day. So, um, I want to first apologize to anybody I've been really defensive with. And, um, you know, I need to work on building a better opinion about myself to, so I don't let others get to me and become so defensive, you know? Um, I know I can be a royal bitch a lot of the time and especially when attacked or made fun of. I want to apologize to my friend I've been talking about in this drama lately. There's a lot of drama going on between us and I don't like that at all. Um, so I apologize for mean things I've said to you um, in return. I was very hurt and hurt people hurt people. I was very hurt that I've known you and been your friend for 20 years. And instead of coming to me privately and saying, you know, I was offended by these things that you've said, um, you go and join forces with my trolls and become my biggest troll. So that really hurt my feelings. And pretty much just talking about me online, um, I, you know, I've, I wouldn't, I, I don't know, I just... That hurt my feelings. Um, you know, I I really considered you a friend. I for 20 years. So I apologize if that word offended you. You know, I said it out of anger, and I didn't mean it in a literal sense. You know, um, I also anytime that you've dropped off the face of the earth a few times and didn't leave me a phone number or address, I always tried to find you because I missed you and I was wanted to know how you were doing um, <clears throat> so I would con even go as far as con trying to find your dad to get your information and I remember I did that once <laughs> so um, yeah I would just appreciate it um, if 
we could just leave each other alone, that would be great. Um, it's just gone too far and I just want to move on from drama and just try to be a better person and I, um, yeah, as for the other thing you, you were saying that I was, you know, the traumatic events in your life, I would never make light of that and make fun of you for that and that hurt me that you thought that too. I don't know where that came from but, um, you know, <laughs> People, if people are saying things about me online, I, I, if you're my friend, you should come to me and ask me if they're true and talk about it privately, not start a harassment campaign. And that's, that's where I became so defensive. So that's all I'm going to say about that. If you guys, I mean, if, if you, hey, if my haters still want to make fun of me, then that's fine. There's nothing really I can do about that um, except just learn to really completely ignore it. And uh, I really do try to block it out and that's why I block certain comments. Um, and sometimes it's really hard to tell who's being sincere and who's not. So again, I just wanna clear that up and that is the last of the drama you're gonna hear from me. Um, <laughs> I promise. Spoiler alert, Chantal did not become a better person. She also immediately broke her promise to never mention the situation again because on April 4th, 2018, Manicunt, Kathy, whatever you want to call her, released an email that she received from Chantal. This email was confirmed to be legitimate and said the following. Okay, so if you could stop acting like a crazy teenager and creating 100,000 fake accounts trying to harass me, that would be wonderful. You're taking this way too far. And guess what? It's all your fault. You started this. You flip out because you see that I called one of my trolls a retard in a figurative sense a long time ago in self-defense. Yet I have screenshots of me saying it to you on Facebook as a joke. But that time it was okay, right? All bullshit excuses for you to be pissed for no reason because you have self-hatred issues, which is why you harm yourself and threaten self-harm, and now you're taking it out on me. You sit there and talk about my eating disorder with my trolls, but what about the self-harm you used to do? Again, don't come for me unless your closet is clean, which it is not. I never mention anything about etc. You are making shit up now. You are in the wrong here. As a friend, if you were offended by something I said a year ago online, for fuck's sake, all you had to do was message me on Instagram. But instead, like a coward, you block me and become my biggest troll. How would you feel if it was your kid who was being trolled online? Our friendship is over, if we ever had one, which is apparent to me that we never did. But it is so, so, so low of you to bring up 20 years of information, most lies and exaggerations, stuff that we talked about in confidence as friends, but you have no boundaries and you have no morals and you have no soul. You are in a very dark place and I would get help for it if I were you. Tell me, how as a parent do you have the time to sign up to forums with edgy names like Manicunt when you're a single mother of two? What kind of example are you setting for them? I know you're in Yarmouth and I have all the screenshots of harassment you have been putting me through and for what? A lousy comment I made? Pfft, go cry in a corner for fuck's sake and grow up. You have always been a whack job and all of Cornwall knows that. If you ever mention another thing about me online, and I will be checking, I will be sending all of the screenshots to Child Protective Services in your town and to the authorities for harassment. This has gone too far. Enough is enough. And by the way, honey, BB has his permanent residency, so shove your threats up your ass. And sure, a lot of online idiots hate me. Hell, at this point, with the time they spend on me, it's a fucking fan club. And you can now say you're just as low as they are. Congratulations. My life is great. I don't need to spend all day harassing others. Good luck with that, LOL. Hashtag winning. Someone even admonished her for threatening to call CPS. And she doubled down. She said she is neglecting them to get high and harass me all day. Um, I'm not going to let this affect me anymore. I deleted my previous video about taking back the apology and everything. I'm just, I'm so done with the drama. They can keep doing it. They can eat steamy piles of dog turds for all I care. But it's not going to affect my journey anymore. It's not going to affect my videos. 
Um, and I realized something that at this point, it's pretty much a fan club. People who obsess over you that much. So keep on it. <laughs> um, yeah, of course, I'm not going to call Child Protective Services. Um, I just, you know, when you're being threatened, um, it's just you'll do anything. But I will look into a restraining order and legal recourse against her which um in my opinion is a very uh, i'll always stand by that that's a very bad example on your kids and i don't under i just don't understand how somebody with children would bully other people or would t like do that you know like all day long it just doesn't make sense to me so that's why that's where that comes from but that's the last it, it's gonna affect my journey um i don't want my channel to be a negative place and to for it to affect me negatively because then they win this kept going for a long time there was at least one more email from chantal to kathy and a lot of comments on different videos each using sock accounts with kathy warning chantal that she would escalate this to a criminal matter if chantal did not leave her and her children alone I'm going to wrap up the summary of this friend here, but I could honestly make a five-hour documentary on Kathy and Chantal alone. I do think this example really does show how Chantal cannot take criticism, and she immediately goes after someone's kids and makes threats about CPS. It's very odd. Now, throughout the years, Chantal has given us small stories about acquaintances that never really even became friends because of Chantal's actions almost immediately. For instance, this story from July 24th, 2018, Chantal explains a time when she was bouncing around living in different friends' homes, and although she admits herself she was getting help with groceries probably from her mom or aunt or grandma, she immediately, upon moving into this girl's home, ate all of the food in the girl's fridge and then cannot seem to understand why the girl was upset with her. So there's this time when I was like, not living at home I was kind of just bouncing around from friend's house to friend's house and you know there was one time and I didn't really have this was one time it was like a really low point in my life I was still a teenager I had no money um, I was still in school I lived with a girl she was looking for a roommate I wasn't really her friend but I knew her through an acquaintance anyways so she was a nude model so she she was really thin you know she, she was very in shape had a nice body whatever but I don't think she ate because very much. And I, like when I came in, um, <clears throat> I was like, oh no. The minute I looked in her kitchen and saw that she she didn't even have a regular size fridge. It was like a bar fridge. So I was like, what the hell, you know? I was like, where am I going to fit all my food? Because I was getting help with groceries and buying stuff like that. So this model, I got to her place and... Um, you know, I remember her saying to me, like, you can help yourself to anything in the fridge. And she had gone to work. And so I opened the little bar fridge and I'm peeking inside, you know, feeling like Alice in Wonderland looking through the little people and the little door. And uh, I'm not kidding. There was like a bottle of water, it was Fiji water, and a hundred, about a hundred grams of lean turkey deli meat and a baggie with a few slices of red pepper. And I was like, well, you know, she said I could help myself to something and I, I didn't have anything to eat and I had no lovers that could bring me Burger King for foreplay, you know, so I ate it. And the worst part was, is that I don't know if she remembered, she told me, you know, like help yourself. Maybe it was just like, a, you know, being polite, but then she came home and she was like, she was really strange. She would just like, she was one of those people that would go from like super nice to like, insta bitch kind of like me but she was like psychotic um like she's really bad so she became like psychotic on me and was just like all upset and and really upset that i had eaten her food and i was just sitting there on her couch and just thinking to myself like is this real it, what has my life become like I'm sitting here arguing with a nude model over a few slices of red pepper and 100 grams of turkey meat. Like, what the fuck, you know? Anyway. Or how about this story time from September 19th, 2019, where Chantal recounts an old friend who she calls Jessica, 
who stole her man, who wasn't even her man, by the way, because she walked faster than her. I don't know. You'll see what I mean. Chantal was so jealous of this, but continued hanging out with this friend. And many years later, she supposedly saw Jessica pregnant and homeless, begging for money. And Chantal threw her a 20 and bought her some coffee, which like, even if that's true, it doesn't make you look like the saint you think it does that you left an old friend who was pregnant and homeless on the street with 20 bucks and a coffee girl. So, thought I would talk a bit about, maybe I told a story, maybe I just told part of the story, but I'm going to tell you most of the story. Um, so being an adult now, I've pretty been in, pretty much been in um, relationships and dating my entire adult life, but it's a nice change from when I was growing up and a teenager when I would just fantasize about dudes because I could barely get a boyfriend. So I guess when you're, when you think of the term fat friend, sadly by definition, that's what I was. I was the fat friend. I mean, I'm fine with that now, honestly, but self-acceptance is, it takes a while sometimes, you know? So, yeah, so I just, you know, whenever a, a guy I liked, because, you know, even though I was not desirable by a lot of men <laughs> or guys growing up, I was still kind of picky, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I was kind of like, you know, why, and I'm not picky for looks wise, picky for certain personality traits, um, you know, like certain things so a lot of the people a lot of the dudes that were interested in my friends or that my friends were interested in i didn't find really desirable anyway but i think it just would have been nice to have some attention <laughs> so i was pretty much used to being like just ignored when we would be in a situation i was the fat friend i was the third wheel when we go out to a bar or something or to a party i was the fat friend i was the cock blocker whatever you want to call it but there was one time that I got my hopes up. And this time it really annoyed me. So I'm going to tell you about it. Basically, in my hometown there was a bar. It was called La Maison, which means the house. <laughs> in English. So La Maison kind of like an alternative bar and um, you know just kind of loungy not really a, not a dance club and there was a huge outdoor patio where I spent most of my time smoking and talking to people and uh, I was waiting for I was I arrived earlier than my friend I was hanging out with this girl we'll call her Jessica and um, Jessica wasn't really a friend she was somebody who um, was popular very pretty Every guy loved her. And uh, so, you know, I was getting ready to be the fat friend again that night. <laughs> but um, she wasn't really a friend. She was just somebody that I, I would go out and party with out of desperation. Um, she was the kind of friend that would, like, meet you at the bar but then leave you and talk to, like, guys all night. So, <laughs> um, so I'm out there smoking. And all of a sudden, this dude comes up to me and starts talking to me. I don't remember what he said, but I could tell like he was, the way we were conversing, it was going somewhere. You know what I'm saying? He was so nice. And we'll call him Jackson because his name was something along the lines of that. I just remember liking his name. He was like my type to the T, like perfect, beautiful, like beautiful eyes that you look, he's like looks at you intently when he's talking to you. Um, I think he had a leather jacket. I don't know. He, there's a lot of things I liked about him. So we're talking for a while. And uh, to the point where I saw another friend that was there with a group of other friends. And she walked by us and winked at me and like, woo, you know, look at Chantal. So I was like really like already my heart was racing. Like this guy, I was like so into him. Along comes Jessica. Um, she's like, oh, hi, you know, kind of ignoring the guy. 
he was still fixing it on me, it seemed like, you know. He looked at her and talked to her and said hi. He was very friendly. Um, but he seemed still into me. So at the end of the night, she's like, let's go to a party. That was the thing, right? Like, let's go to an after party after the bar. So somebody was throwing a party. I don't even know who this person was. Follow her. And then I'm like, can we bring Jackson? And she's like, yeah, of course. So we're walking there. This is when I used to walk around town once upon a time. We're walking and I was heavier. So I was kind of dragging behind a bit. And they started walk like they walk fast normally. They started bonding over some kind of conversation and she was giggling and they were walking ahead of me. And I was like, wait up, you know, <laughs> like rude. So they're like, oh my God, I'm sorry. So finally get to the party. So we get to the party. It's packed in this small, like, I don't know, bachelor, one bedroom, upstairs apartment. I'm like a duplex. I'm trying to slow down. I don't want to run out of big beefy wieners before my story ends. So that's when things started to take a turn and I was starting to feel like the fat friend again. I was starting to feel like <sighs> he likes Jessica. And I mean, Jessica was beautiful and bubbly and everything, so I don't blame him, but you know, it's just like, uh, of course, you know, one of those things. <laughs> so we're sitting around having a beer and the person who owned the place had a guitar and acoustic in the corner. And he's like, hey, mind if I play? So Jessica gets all excited and she's like really two sheets to the wind. She's just out of it. So she sits across from him, cross-legged. He sits across from her cross-legged. I can't cross my legs, so they have that going for them too. <laughs> so I know I sound bitter. Maybe I was. Yeah, I was. Anyway, he starts playing Maroon 5 that... You know what I mean, that one. And he's singing, and the same intent look he was giving me with his big baby blues at the bar, he was giving to Jessica, and she was falling for it. She was like melting like butter, like looking at him literally like it would make you throw up. It was like, and she actually started crying. And he was singing her all passionately. And I was like, oh my God, I was going to vomit. So I had to get up and go, you know, first of all, it turned me off that he was singing Maroon 5. Like if it was like Guns N' Roses Patience, I would have fought for him, but it was Maroon 5. So have him all you want. <laughs> so Jackson wasn't the one. Yeah, so that annoyed me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Eventually stopped hanging out with her. Um, I think she ended up moving away. Um, moving up to Ottawa, actually. And I remember visiting Ottawa one day and uh, shopping in the market. This was years ago. And I remember seeing her. Like, there's a lot of... Um, homeless people around like the Rito area, like downtown area, begging for money and stuff. And I see, I've seen her, she was pregnant and she was on the street begging and I bought her a coffee and I gave her 20 bucks. So with these few examples, we can see the way Shans Hall treats interpersonal relationships. She slept with her friend's boyfriend with her friend in the same room. She offended her friend of 20 years who has special needs children by saying the R word on YouTube. And rather than listening to the criticism of her friend, she attacks her parenting and threatens to call CPS. When someone opens their home to her when she has nowhere else to go, she selfishly eats all of their food. She judges her friends behind their backs and you can feel the hatred she has for these so-called friends just because they're more attractive than her. They can walk faster than her and they can get guys that she can't. She's so jealous of other women that she, according to her, left an old friend pregnant and homeless and feels like a saint because she threw him $20 and a cup of coffee. 
But this is only scratching the surface of Chantal's interpersonal relationships. I put up a poll on my community tab and on Twitter, and the majority of you said you'd prefer this video to be split into multiple parts rather than one long video. So we're going to stop here. And in part two, we'll get into more of her friendships like Shannon and even Pete's. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you'll leave a like on this video. Drop a comment on your thoughts. Consider subscribing, please. And I'll see you in part two. Pathetic.